Hello and welcome back to a DT Scale Modeling Kit Review. Today the kit we're going to have a look at is TACOM's FE432, the Mark II slash 1. Uh, kit's been around for a year or two now I think. Um, and is, there's also been a subsequent release off the back of this, of the FE432, the Bulldog, which is the updated, sort of like slightly more modern version that was actually used in Iraq in more recent years with the uh, anti-RPG bar armour and blocks of explosive reactive armour and things, and a, a armoured weapon station. Uh, this is something I've been after for a little while, I uh, quite like modern British armour and it's a bit thin on the ground and some of the representation by some manufacturers so it's nice to see this coming out. Incredibly versatile vehicle, used by many different arms of the British Army um, and came in numerous configurations and is still used today in some of those configurations. More in the specialised ones than the standard APC nowadays, um, but yep, still in use. If you're interested, kit number is 2066. Uh, box art, pretty good. Done by somebody called Jason in 2016. And uh, depicts a standard black and green camouflaged uh, FE432 with a chieftain in the background, so presumably somewhere based in Germany. Uh, all the hatches can be open, built or, open or closed. Sorry, there's a track jig included. There's link and length tracks. There's P and four clear parts included. Four types of markings, and apparently P parts included, which it says twice. Uh, the four markings are a Berlin Brigade one, 1980, Royal Scots Seventh Armoured Brigade. I'm not sure what time scale that is. It's in a desert camouflage, so. Perhaps the early 2003 Iraq invasion, or maybe even 91 Gulf War. Um, sprues here on the side, so you can see how many we've got. We've got two of these, two of these, so four, five, six, seven, eight sprues, one clear sprue, upper and lower hull, a decal sheet, and two frets, a photo etch, and the track jig, which is just here. So, yeah. That's the box, let's have a look inside. I paid, I'm not sure where the actual RP is, probably not far off this, that's what I paid for it in a shop. I actually bought this in a shop, which was quite nice. So, inside the box, you'll find pretty much those sprues we just saw. So we've got a clear sprue, relatively large for the vehicle, which in itself is not very big, mainly comprised of, um, these things. Periscopes, that's the word. I assume this could be the same clear sprue that's in the Bulldog because it's also got armoured windows here which are not present on this kit. I think they're for the armoured crew station on the Bulldog version. Upper and lower hull come in a bag. I'll look at all these separately in a second because these bags are really noisy and I, I made that mistake last time I did a tack on reviews and bagging everything on camera. This is the track jig. So we'll look at that in more detail and we'll have a look at the instructions to see how that works. And then your, your screws all down on the typical tack on instruction sheet. But we'll get all this out and we'll have a more detailed look in a second. Okay, so <clears throat> starting with the instruction book. It's a big, well, it's A4, but double A4 if that makes sense, so each page is A4, I think. So it's nice and big. Uh, on the inside of the front cover we have the colour college for the first two sets of markings, which are, as we saw in the box, the Berlin Brigade uh, block camo colours, and then a uh, all over desert scheme. Uh, colour colours are in ammo by MIG and only am by mix, so you'll have to do some converting if you don't use that paint range. It's nice and unique and would go really well with a, a chieftain painted up in the same colour scheme. Nice and unique. Um, relatively bland, 
desert color scheme with the tactical markings I would assume that's probably a 91 Gulf War vehicle moving on we've got just your usual how to remove PE in some kind of slightly silly little cartoon style drawings how to apply decal decals got your sprue maps here not numbered well I say not numbered you can actually almost read the numbers that are on the sprues but at least it should give you an idea if you need to sort of search for something you should be able to find it here uh, if you haven't built a TACOM before I haven't, I haven't actually built one yet but I have reviewed their G6 Rhino so I've seen a set of the instructions before they do these sort of 3D kind of grayscale CAD drawing style instructions. Um, I've heard kind of good and bad things. Occasionally, apparently, they can leave a little be, a little to be desired regarding placement of parts. But we'll see. Uh, you've got little windows here that are calling you to make certain parts to then add in. So you're making up the actual bench seats here for the interior, then gluing them to the wall here, which then subsequently gets installed onto the lower hull. Um, so this thing does have a full interior, so here we're building up the crew seats, at least on one side of the hull, and we've got what I assume is going to be the driver's position with the steering tillers, uh, some kind of storage box, set of radios here, uh, putting in batteries, and the radios on the hull side. Moving forward, we've got the uh, firewall for the driver's compartment, complete with pedals, the scissoring seat, um, which will go up and down, allowing the command the driver to see out of the open hatch or button down. The upper portion of the firewall. Um, and then the actual crew compartment firewall, because in this space here would be the engine. So I've got options here for okay for uh, the commander sits behind the driver, so we've got either a stowed or deployed commander seat. More interior parts going on here, and we're doing the seats for the other side. More, they're either battery boxes or they are. Either battery boxes or ammunition stores, but I assume since there's some in the driver's compartment, that they're probably batteries. Um, if anybody out there is ex-army or current army and has used these things for real, you'll probably know what they are. I have actually been in one of these before at an airsoft site. There's a couple of airsoft sites. Run them in their games. And screw ever going to war in one. <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, I believe this is possibly the... Again, I could be wrong. This could be the NBC filtration air filtration kit. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Again, somebody who's maybe used these things for real would maybe know what that is. Uh, then we've got the Swanson size go on rear rear plate and details to the rear plate um, boxes on the rear. And we flip it upside down. And then we're doing the suspension. There's no full torsion bars on this, there's just the exterior arms and other details. This is where we start to see the track jig, so the track jig is then placed over the wheel positions. Oh, I see, sorry, no, okay. So the track jig is actually, it's a track jig but also a suspension alignment, it's got holes in it so you put them it must fit between here and where the wheel should be so that means that your uh, run of torsion bars will all be level that's quite cool um, I, by the looks of the instructions here it does look like these are keyed um, which means you shouldn't be able to put them in upside down or anything but there's usually some play in these things which means that you will potentially still get one wheel cocked off the ground if you're not careful so that will hopefully help eliminate that. More details going on the lower hull. We've got the sprocket and the idler wheel being made up here. Just very simply two parts each. 
uh, it would appear there's no polycaps in this kit. A little annoying. Um, I quite like having polycaps in the kit. It does, because invariably when you're trying to... I don't install my wheels at this stage, so I would have them all off or, and paint them all on sticks and stick them on later on, which means that um, when you're trying to build the tracks up here, for example, although actually you don't need the wheels on to build the tracks up, as we'll see here, we've got the jig for that. So you just place the sprocket and the idler in place and you can glue the tracks around and, and actually the jig has a depth to it so it will support the track links. So you're allowing you to make up the track, run of tracks, pull that off of there. As we can see here, with the more or less complete, and then you just, because it's link in length, you just put the, you just drop the last length in. So we'll have to see how that works. Step 17 just seems to be a picture of the left and right hand sides, possibly just showing you kind of what that should all look like when it's all finished. Then we move on to mud guards, which are photo etch, so the photo etch mud guards, which is quite nice, quite nice and thin. Uh, framing for the inside of the upper hull, which is also padded in real life, I think, from what I remember. There's uh, vents and lights and things all around there, I believe. And we have to remove some parts here, I think. Just some little mounting points that are possibly for the Bulldog version, maybe, not for this one. Rear door, rear door being installed. We have the door opener closed. Um, more details on the inside of the upper hull. Uh, sorry, no, that's the outside, that's the inside. So yeah, some more details on the inside and on the outside. Um, and again, more details all on the outside. These things are quite cool. It's quite cool to see them included, actually. They are the... I think a lot of people think they're smoke launchers, but if I understand correctly, these are actually tent pole holders or camo net holders. They put poles in them and it allows you to put a camo net over the vehicle. Again, if you've served on these things and I'm wrong about that, please feel free to drop a comment below and uh, correct me on any of the technicalities of the actual 432. My own, limit, my own knowledge is relatively limited. Uh, the main rear hatch can be open or closed. Um, looking here, you're not cementing it, so you can probably just leave that unglued, but still in place and flip that open and close however you like. Um, we've got the engine grills go on here. And then we've got the commander's hatch. Uh, quite a number of places go into this. Um, and then with the pinto mounted GPMG, we've got the front plate here, driver's instrument panel going on to the inside of that and then the engine access, transmission access hatch, excuse me, on the outside along with the actual smoke launchers and what I assume is possibly a tow bar. And then we've got the headlight clusters being built up, photo etch um, brush guards in front of them which is quite nice. Um, and clear parts, I believe, for the lights, which I quite like. Some more photo etch details going on here, a step, and some other um, small small photo etch pieces all being applied here. Then we're applying the top hull and the front plate. Exhaust, quite a big prominent thing on this vehicle. Have the has the sort of muffler at the front here, and this big long exhaust which runs all the way to the rear. A uh, really good opportunity for doing some nice rust effects and things on these. These, because they're exposed, they get warm. They're, they're quite often relatively rusty on these vehicles. Um, quite a nice touch there. Um, and this other part, which I think is a cover for the one of the vents on the side here, which is possibly the MBC filtration, the back of the MBC filtration unit. But again, I might not be correct about that. We have, excuse me, we have tow cables being built up here. And, okay, so actually we're going in this order here, so this is the underlying tray which then sits underneath the exhaust there, and a couple of other small photo etch parts. The prominent storage box and the upper uh, storage basket which sits on top of the vehicle. Not sure if I'll put that in because it means you, it means you can only open one half of the rear hatch. 
I don't know. But again, it's made up of um, some photo edge parts and things, so it'll be quite nice, but not quite, quite a nice thing when built up. Then we have a full colour colour here of the interior of the upper hull. So this is looking at the roofs, this is the main hatch, the driver's hatch, the commander's hatch and where the engine grills would go. Um, giving you colour call outs for, for that. Um, although it does seem to miss out the main colour. We've got, these are actually the crew compartment lights from what I recall. This is the crew compartment um, sort of ventilation system. It's basically got little air blowers on them, a bit like uh, your overhead panel in an aeroplane kind of idea. It's calling creme vice for this. Got NATO green for the inside of the hatch here and, and satin or matte black for the various parts. But this sort of tan colour here, which is the um, sort of padding and cladding that's on the inside of these vehicles, which is this kind of colour, although a lot of time it's sometimes a bit orangey actually, it's quite an orangey kind of colour. Um, it doesn't seem to call out for that here, which is a little strange, so I'm not sure exactly what colour you would use for that. Some kind of tan khaki colour, maybe even an ochre colour actually. Um, I know it calls it here, sorry. Okay. This page is the other two schemes, we've just got an unknown unit, black and white black and white, black and green camo, and we've got uh, an OP4 unit, which is possibly a Batis scheme, uh, the sort of green and green and sand yellow colour that uh, the vehicles over at the training area in Canada quite often wore. And what we have here is some more interior colour call-outs. Um, so it is actually telling us here that that interior colour is mainly sand, it's calling for sand yellow. A sort of matte aluminium for the floor, some colour colour out here for the interior for the driver's compartment and other bits of the interior. Which is really nice to have actually because it's nice and clear, it's nice and bright, it's not cluttered, it's very easy to see what bits should be what colour. So it's very nice. So and a nice little sort of schematic on the back there. So that's the instructions. So let's start looking at some Start looking at some plastic. So what I might do is, uh, if you excuse the shake for a minute. There we go. So what we have here is the upper hull. Um, we have some sprue bracing here, for, which is quite a common thing on the inside of holes, and you can see here some pore points. But what it does mean, hmm. and then we have the underside. So, unfortunately, uh, give me two seconds, I will find something to do. You'll do, a dirty paintbrush. So, hopefully, if you see here, this is actually this is all interior detail. Okay, this stuff needs painted if you're going to do that. Now, fair enough, yes, okay, it's on the inside, right? And if you've got the hatch closed, and if you've got the top hatch closed, we well, you not see any, any of it anyway, but if you decided to have that top hatch open and the rear door open, then really you're still going to see relatively little of this inside fight, the, the roof of the fighting compartment. However, there is some... Sorry, I can't see my camera screen very well. And now it's gone for the... Sorry about this. Okay, so just here... You can see some ejector pin marks. There's one here as well. And there's one on the opposite side and there's one just here. Now... Hmm, lovely camera. This one is raised, which means that that could be dealt with. This one, excuse me, looking at my hand. Well, annoyingly, some are raised and some are recessed, but they're very shallow. 
which means they're a bit of a pain to fill because they're not actually got enough depth to fill. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's a little bit of a shame, but uh, I'm sure we could probably deal with that. What I'm going to do is zoom you back out a little bit because. And see if we can't get a little bit more light. There we go, maybe that's a bit better. So as you can see we've got tread plate detail on the inside here. These areas here are covered by the benches so I'm not overly worried about these pin marks here and this one won't be seen anyway. And this is the floor of the driver's compartment so not too bad. It's a nice strong mounting point um, locating parts here. Um, Get this to focus. Come on, there we go. Okay, so some nice detail there waiting for the extra parts all to be added. So, as you can see, it's not really a very big vehicle, uh, not very big at all. So, I'll go through the sprues. Put this the right way around. Clear parts, they're clear parts, I mean there's not much to show. Periscopes here. These are the armoured windows, I believe, actually, for the other version. It's probably just a generic sprue. It's mainly periscopes and uh say that's a flashing like an orange beacon light, vision blocks for the front and headlights and some very small lights there, so again, not too bad. So I'm just going to go through the sprues as I pull them out of the box, so it says sprue F. So what we've got is the main exterior uh, hull sides. Nice detail here on this uh, vent area here, so nice recessed detail. I believe these are the fire extinguisher activation Handles that can just be pulled from the outside. I think they actually have photo etched little sort of covers on them. The inside of the I'm not entirely sure if you really call that the glacis plate, certainly the front plate of the vehicle. Commander's uh, cupola rings here, driver's hatch, the exterior storage box, GPMG. It's not bad. It's got a straight barrel and things, and it's got a little bit of detail on it, so it's probably not too bad, but if you really wanted to, you could possibly replace that with an aftermarket one. Thankfully, these parts, although they're quite small, their sprue gates are relatively narrow, so it's not too bad. Generally, we've got some other parts, these are the pintle mount for the GPMG, um, more parts for that, the exhaust pipe running here, another part of that storage box, and some other small handles and such for the outside of the vehicle. This is actually the outside of that plate, which is quite nicely detailed. These are the insides. Um, I really hope that this is something that gets covered. These, as you can see, are ejector pin, not even ejector pin marks, they're just blobs of plastic. So they're okay because they get cut off, but Obviously, something gets mounted over here, so this this one here is probably not too bad. But you'd want to cut these down, cut this down, obviously cut that off. But you then want to cut down the subsequent disc that's left to ensure it doesn't foul on whatever's going on here. That's that's a bit of a stupid design there, because that looks like interior detail. Just got a big ruddy jet pin mark right in the middle of it. Not the most clever. Bit of moulding of have to have seen, I have to admit. So we're on to sprue G. Uh, so I think this is part of that NBC filtration unit. Uh, so nice detail on these little uh, control boxes and things. These are the firewalls, again, nicely detailed. Nice kind of deep moulding here. There's 
Oh, that's where the so this is the driver's compartment floor where the two steering tillers disappear into. So that's quite nice actually. You can kind of see down in there. There's detail. Oxygen bottles. Insurance panel here. This is that crew compartment ceiling sort of ventilation system. Part of the. Um, could be the crew compartment firewall actually, so this is the access down into the driver's compartment down here. Uh, the scissor mechanism for the driver's chair. And more detail panels here, part of the radio boxes I believe. Um, so yeah, that screws are nicely detailed and I don't see too much in the way of now these are really nice as well. More interior detail there. Um, there's again, there's an injector pin mark right in the middle of it though. I just kind of have a feel that they could have been hidden somewhat easier. Moving on to sprue E. Rear hatch. Again, these are on the the outside let's detail these 3D jetter pin marks be removed more small parts this could all be the bottom of the storage rack the storage cage from the top I think that could be the bottom of it the actual rear door itself and half ex yep. And if you want to pose this open, let's get rid of these two bad boys first. So hmm. these are the insides of the big round top hatch, thankfully. No ejector pin marks on the insides of those and none on the outsides. Engine cover louvers. Uh, the front access hatch here. Again, if you should wish to, you can possibly buy aftermarket transmission and engine details for these. I know that Acura Armor, I think, have got a range of upgrade kits and various things for their resin F V432, so I'm fairly sure they may well do some kind of interior engine transmission details which you could possibly make fit into this vehicle, in which case you could do it as under maintenance with this hatch open, if you should do such a thing, you'll have to get rid of these ejector pin marks here. It's a bit of a shame because the detailing is incredibly nice, and it's one of these kits that really lends itself to, you know, being on a diorama. It's not very big, so being on a diorama or something else, or or making it into a scene by having these hatches open and some crew milling around, or I don't know. The commander out the top hatch, sort of firing with the MG while the crew, you know, while the soldiers are jumping out the back of it or something, and it's just a bit of a shame that there's this, you know, to do some clean up with these. So there's just one, tr one, one sprue of this, which is all the Lincoln length tracks, so there's one set and the other. I think it's quite a simple track in real life, so. Uh, they're nice. Let's see if we can't see where the ejector pin marks are though. Okay, so you can see here the ejector pin marks are on the inside face. Most of them seem relatively raised, so maybe a little go with a sanding stick and a knife should get rid of the worst of that. And being on the inside face, um, most of that won't be seen. It's a relatively narrow track anyway, so. But, and every single individual link has about two of them on it. So, a bit of clean up on those, but perhaps not the end of the world. So, we have Sprue B. There's two of these, so I'll just show you one. We have the tow cables. We have fire extinguisher. It's nice. Um, possibly mud guard or storage boxes. Parts for the overhead cage. Internal benches. Uh, radio boxes here, 
which are nicely detailed. Top of the battery boxes, again, if that's what those are. Uh, these are the undersides of the benches for the inside. Various other small parts, including here. These are where are we? These are all the tent, the camelnet pole holders, which are actually slightly hollow on the ends, which is good because it means that actually if you did want to pose this with a camelnet over, you wouldn't have to drill those to accept a, a, hole, a pole for the camelnet, which is quite cool. Uh, some springs, I don't remember seeing springs, but I assume they're on the hull somewhere. Handles, suspension, parts here, the actual torsion bars and of course the wheels which are nice to detail with a slightly more modern uh, holes around them which I think were just to make the wheels a bit lighter, they did it on the Challenger 2 as well. Either that or to help with mud clearance and things but I'm not entirely sure. I assume it does both functions possibly. Sprocket, quite nicely detailed. Don't ask me if these have got the right number of bolts and things, I have no idea. Not something I personally care much about. Um, I assume, I haven't seen them elsewhere, so I assume the idler wheel is actually just the same on each, it's basically the same as a road wheel, I think. Because there's two, four, six on here, this is a duplicate sprue. And I've lost the picture of it. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So there's five road five road wheels on this, and the sixth is acts as the idler. But as far as I can see, they're all got the same number, which means that the idler wheel is in effect just another road wheel. So that's all the plastic in the box. Bar. Yeah. This is the track jig. It would focus. Right. So, holes here for putting over the suspension arm and getting the correct alignment. And it's the same on each side, actually, this thing. More or less. So, put your sprocket or idler on here and pop your tracks around. Which is quite cool. So handy tool to have. Um, and finally, so finally in here we have two frets of photo which as you can see it's not a very big one, but we've got headlight brush guards, you have to turn each of these veins in the opposite plane. Uh, more brush guards here I think. Other small parts for the hull and the rear mud flaps. And then this fret is all the mesh for the storage basket on the on the roof. It's quite thin actually, it's full which is quite nice. But I have to be quite careful with it because I can see these sheets are already got a slight bent to them. Although actually, I don't know if you'll see this in the bag actually. These mud guards here have got a slight bend to them, but they've got the bend in the right way, which is quite nice. Now, and then we have the relatively small marking sheet. Um, I don't know who they're printed by, it doesn't say it's just small, but they look. I can see they're all on registers, they're mainly just some, but they look nice. It's quite a thin sheet as well, so they shouldn't be too thick or anything. So. Okay, so that kind of concludes it for this really. Um, we've had a look through the instructions and all the, the plastic in the box and the photo action decals, some nice marking options, um, comes with the interior uh, which is really quite good. Um, plenty of scope for converting these vehicles into the other specialisations and things which would, could make them really interesting. Um, for 
for anybody who's a fan of British armor. So, thank you for watching. Uh, sorry, it's been a little bit all over the place and just getting back into doing some reviews and uh, my camera position and things is still not ideal, but it does allow me to do these sort of overheads. Uh, but it's so it's not the best, and I apologize for that. But hopefully. If you haven't seen in this kit before, it gives you an insight to what's in the box, the detail level of the parts, uh, some of the potential pitfalls. Obviously, I haven't actually built this yet, but as you can see, things like the jet pin marks in some relatively obvious places, which uh, are just something to be aware of. But um, I believe it will probably build up to be a very nice looking model. Uh, the fit should be quite good. It's a modern tooling of a tack-on kit. As far as I know, there is not any major issues with that. Uh, so should be good and uh, so thanks for watching and we'll see you in a future video bye for now